Hi everyone. Today we're going to be looking at how to solve what we call semilinear systems. So in your notebook, please put today's subtitle, which is Solving Semilinear Systems. Well, the big question first is what is a semilinear system? Well, a semilinear system is defined as a system of equations where one of the functions is linear, but the other one is not. In our course, we'll be focusing on the following kind of system. We will be focusing on semi-linear systems where one rule is linear and the other one is quadratic. So these kinds of systems are asking you, when will the line intersect with a parabola? Now, if all this already sounds complicated, Rest assured that after a couple of examples, you will be solving semilinear systems very easily. One of the biggest things that makes this kind of system very easy to solve is the fact that we'll be relying on only one method. We will be relying almost exclusively on the comparison method. The best way to learn how to solve a semilinear system is to perform one right away. So, I would like you to put the following example down. Solve the system of y equals x squared minus x plus 3 versus y equals 2x plus 13. Notice that the first rule is a quadratic function and the second rule is a linear one. So, we want to find out when the line will intersect the parabola. Now, as I mentioned before, comparison method works best. And if you remember what comparison method is, this method involves basically setting one rule equal to the other rule. So let's write that down. When will x squared minus x plus 3 equal to 2x plus 13? This is basically asking you, when will both y values be the same? Well, if you think about this for a second, you'll realize that you've seen this many times. This comes down to a very basic solving a second degree function. And how do you solve a second degree function? All you have to do is put all your variables and all your constants to one side and set the empty side equal to zero. So, for this particular example, I'm going to put everything to the left side. So, on the left side, I have my x squared. And I will have my negative x subtract 2x. And then I will also have my plus 3 subtract 13. And the empty side becomes 0. Let's clean this up a little bit more. We have x squared minus 3x minus 10 is equal to 0. And don't forget, to solve a second degree function, you can either use any preferred factoring technique, or you can use your quadratic formula. For this example, I believe that product sum works very nicely. The product is minus 10. The sum is minus 3 and I believe that the combination will be minus 5 and positive 2. And when you continue your factoring you're going to end up with x minus 5 times x plus 2 equals 0 and solving for x you're going to get x equals to 5 or x equals to minus 2. That means that the line will intersect the parabola when the x coordinates are 5 and minus 2. Now because there are two x values, that means there's going to be two y values. And you have to solve the y values for both of the x's. So I'm going to do one here, and I'm going to do the other one over here. And to solve for the y values, all you have to do is take the x values and plug them into either of the original rules. 
to keep things simple, try to always plug the values back into the linear rule. So I'm going to use the linear rule, y equals 2x plus 13. Let's plug in our first x. y equals 2 times 5 plus 13. And you get a y equals 23. For the other x, y equals, again, I'm going to use a linear rule, 2x plus 13. So let's plug in the other x. y equals 2 multiplied by negative 2 plus 13, giving you a y value of 9. That means the line will intersect the parabola at the following two coordinates. Our solution, the line will intersect the parabola at the coordinate 5 and 23 and at the coordinate minus 2 and 9. Now graphically, how might this look like? Well, I'd like you to pause the video and take a moment to draw the following graph. It could look something like this. You have a line which intersects the parabola at the two solutions that we just found, at minus 2 and 9, and at 5 and 23. So go ahead, take a moment to draw this quick little graph. All right, and that's all really there is to solving a semilinear system. It basically comes down to using the comparison method and then solving a second degree equation. Let's see that in action one more time. I would like you to get the following example down. Solve the system of y equals 2 times x minus 3 all squared plus 5 versus y equals minus 15x plus 25. Notice that this is semilinear because the first rule is quadratic written in standard form and the second rule is a linear function. Well before we begin the first thing you must do is completely expand the quadratic function from standard form so that it becomes general form. So let's get that done first. If done properly, you should get the following. y equals 2x squared minus 12x plus 23. Alright, now that we have it written in general form, we can go ahead and solve our semilinear system using the comparison method. So we have 2x squared minus 12x plus 23 equal to minus 15x plus 25. So let's proceed as if we were solving any old regular second degree equation. So I'm going to shove everything over to the left side. So I end up with 2x squared minus 12x plus 15x plus 23 minus 25. And the empty side becomes 0. When I simplify everything, I end up with 2x squared plus 3x minus 2 equal to 0. And I believe that product sum will work nicely. The product is minus 4 and the sum is 3. I believe that the correct combination is this 1 and positive 4. So let's continue with our factoring. So we have 2x squared. I'm going to stick the 4 with the 2. So plus 4x minus 1x minus 2 equals 0. Continue with the factoring. So this becomes 2x multiplied by x plus 2 and 
for the second grouping, I'm going to remove the minus 1, and that leaves behind an x plus 2 equals 0, and finish up the factoring. x plus 2 multiplied by 2x minus 1 equals 0. And solving for x, I get that x could equal to minus 2, or x could equal to 1 half. Next, I'm going to plug both x's back into either of the original rules. Again, to keep things simple, might as well just use the linear rule. So for the first x, I get y is equal to negative 15 times negative 2 plus 25, thereby giving me a y value of 55. Now let's do the second x value. So again, to keep things simple, I'm going to keep using the linear rule. So y equals minus 15 times a half plus 25, thereby giving me a y value of 17.5. So therefore, our solution the line will intersect the parabola at the following two points at minus 2 and 55 and also at 1 half and 17.5 that's all it takes to solve semilinear systems as you can see, it's definitely not as complicated as it might sound.